All right, here we are with the best book club once again. And this is the, the show where I talk about whatever I feel like relating to literature. And with me today is EHP32. Hello, everyone. And this week, we're going to be talking about a story called The Office. Wedgie Wednesday by Magni Poles. Uh, so I found out a little bit before this that you are actually a really big fan of The Office, as well as I. So I'm curious when when you really got into The Office. Ah, uh, jeez, I got into The Office maybe seven years ago. Um, I remember just seeing it when it was still on Netflix, um, and, uh, when I was younger, and that was the, the entire reason that, uh, I convinced my, my parents to get Netflix so I could watch The Office. Hmm. Do you remember what episode you first saw? I don't remember. Mm. I wish I could. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that that sounds like it was right about right after The Office ended. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I honestly, when for the longest time, I, I think I'm just like a natural born contrarian because any any sort of huge thing that comes along whether it's game of thrones or any kind of the challenges that went around for a while or the office even um when those when they were big and everybody was super into them uh, wandavision that kind of like that kind of thing i just mm-hmm. i just automatically was i just did not have any interest in any of that stuff and the office was was like that for me so many people were raving about it and they loved it and that was not, that was, that I was the opposite. I had no interest in watching it. And then started, what's that? That's just interesting. Uh, Yeah. And then I started, I I was hanging out with, with my buddy and we were were smoking a lot of weed and we were drinking and started, he just played the office. And at first I wasn't, I just, really pay attention much to it but i just started watching it and just got so invested in the story and and then it became my favorite show (laughs) it's a great one easily one of the best if not the best tv shows out there and perfect for really any mood you're in exactly like you can you can be really sad and be like okay just gonna turn on the office real quick and it'll make you feel better you know? mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's episodes and moments in the show that are just perfect for whatever moment you need. It's just that that really is kind of one of the biggest things of why The Office is such a perfect show is that it is so relatable for whatever situation you're in. It's truly timeless. Yeah, it is. It, so it, it, it is, it's fascinating to see uh, people who never worked on The Office and were just inspired by or just simply loved the show to make work around it or attributed to it. And that's what we have with this story by Magni Poles. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious what your first what what you what first went through your head when you saw this story for the first time. I I think what really got me was just how well he um he encapsulated each character. Like, I could 
totally see, you know, all the actors doing everything that he's saying. Um, he just, he got every, every aspect of the characters right in copying them. It was amazing. Yeah, for sure. I, that was, I had a, a, almost an identical thought when I was first reading through it. It's just like, I guess it, I'm, I'm wondering how invested in the show he got because it he really had like, just just reading it I could I could understand that he had a grasp on each of the characters and really how they thought um, and how they would react yeah. to certain things. I think there were a couple things yeah, that sure. might have been a little out of character or didn't quite make sense, but when looking at how he wrote so well the uh, everything else it just they sort of pale in comparison yeah um yeah so even before you read the story and you just saw the title or like or what what were you thinking like and what about it grabbed you to even just read it um I guess I, I definitely wasn't expecting it to be um, from Aaron, Aaron, uh, Aaron dishing them out. Um, so for sure it was going to be one of Michael's, you know, tactics that was going to land him in, um, you know, a meeting with Toby um, about why it's inappropriate, you know, to do this at work. Um, and so I was really interested seeing where the story was going to go um, with Aaron's um, intentions. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I try not to go into things with any sort of expectations whatsoever. It is, it's next to impossible to, to actually do that. But I, 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 I was just browsing through DeviantArt one day and I saw the the title of the office I'm like, oh uh, yep go and do it it just hooked me in and and then i saw it was a script and and i thought wow that's that's kind of odd i haven't really read any scripts beyond uh like acting classes and, and improv class and that sort of thing so it was it was very interesting to actually see someone write in the form of a script um yeah I'd, I'd never seen that before um except of course in classes like you said um but i think seeing it in the form of the office you know favorite tv show was definitely a good good start yeah it was it is and it is it, it's <laughs> I think the amount of stammering that I'm doing is just a, a, a what's the word? Oh, I always have trouble with this. Um, it's such an it's such a an identifying, I guess, an identifier of how well I think this script fits into the show, and it, it it's. It really feels like Gene and Lee could have really written this. Mm -hmm. um, and for those who don't know the names I just said, it's, oh, I can't remember Gene's last name, but they're, they're the writers on The Office, Gene and Lee Stavnitsky. Um And they actually play the Vance Refrigeration uh, I guess warehouse guys. I didn't know that. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's they're, interesting. It's, they're it's fantastic. The one I think one of the most I I have like I've have you heard of the have you either heard or read the the book. Um, Something I can't remember the exact title, like something like The Office and or, or something like that. No, I don't think I have. Oh, uh, I have it on 
my Kindle account. Oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. It's it's by Andy Green. It's called The Office, the untold story of the greatest sitcom of the 2000s. And I 100% recommend getting it. It's fantastic. And it really shows a behind the scenes look that you wouldn't get even from having the DVD set, which I do, uh, or like just watching all the bloopers or extras and all that, the commentaries. Um, mm -hmm. I, one, of the, one of the things I really remember from the book the most was how PJ Novak got started on the show and why he was brought in as a writer in the first place. Um, basically, I, it was, I think it was Greg saw him at a uh, uh what's what are those um open it was an open mic and bj novak was doing stand-up and one of his jokes was yeah i went to college and i really didn't learn anything because i I was a double major in psychology and reverse psychology. And that was the joke that and I know I butchered it, but that was the joke that was like, wow, this like that made I think it was Greg that made him just like, I need this guy. I need him to work on the show. Um, and for That's those great. who for a few Super fans of The Office that don't actually know who B.J. Novak is. He's a writer on the show, and he plays Ryan. Um, so, oh, wow, I just completely went off on a tangent. I don't know where I was going. <laughs> it's okay. It all links back together. Yes, because it's all about The Office, so it's all okay. <laughs> I could talk, exactly. We could talk about The Office as much as we want. Um, so, all right, I guess, I guess we should go back to the actual story then. Um, so after reading it, what, what do you feel like made the most sense? And what felt a little out of place? Hmm. I think I think Magni really just nailed um, Pam and her reaction and how she, you know, immediately goes to Jim and she's like, don't you agree? Like, this is totally inappropriate. Like, you know, and and Jim's kind of like hesitant in in putting in his two cents, um, like he always is. Um, and you know, Pam's trying to get all the all the ladies to agree, and there's Meredith, and she's like, ah, I wasn't wearing any underwear, and I don't know. It was just everything about you know certain certain scenes. Just he wrote so well. For sure, and uh, I think honestly, the the thing that felt the most true among all of all of it, that it, just, it, all of it felt so accurate for the most part. But I think the thing that mm -hmm. felt the most accurate was Pam saying, "Oh my God!" and just the way he wrote it out, the extended "O." Oh, like, oh my God, that's that's exactly how Pam would say it. It's like, yeah, it's it's kind of a little mind blowing that he was able to get it down so well. Yeah. So he, just, I'm thinking he must be a pretty big fan of The Office with how well he was able to write these different characters. And if not, like, I totally surprised me if he doesn't. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 
it would be insane if he if he just had that gift to understand characters just right from the get go. I feel like after just watching it one time or or what have you. Um, I, I think there were a couple okay. things that didn't quite fit, like Jim's sort of teasing of Pam, uh, with with. with I, when they when they're discussing it in the break room, or when Aaron comes out after Angela gave her an atomic wedgie, it's it seems a little more mean than Jim would. I think I feel like I guess the I guess the the atomic wedgie would be more like maybe a little more like Jim, but I, I felt like the break room teasing was sort of I, it seemed more like he would be. A lot more supportive and worried than mm -mm. teasing because she was totally embarrassed in front of the entire entire office. Yeah. Um, in a way that you, like in a way that she never has been before because I mean people have people all throughout the show. So, I mean, sexually harassed her the entire time, but this sort of goes to a new level. Um, yeah. So it, that felt a little odd. And Angela, I could see her, I could definitely see her flat out denying anything happening if somebody confronts her about it. But I, it seems like she would sort of connive some kind of plot to either get Aaron fired or have something happen to her? I can see that. Um, I can see where you're coming from, thinking, like, she would want to be more professional about it and, you know, not stoop to her level. Kind of like what she was saying um, during her talking head that he wrote. Um, but I don't know. I think... I think I could, I can totally envision the scene, you know, her coming out after, you know, getting there and the atomic wedgie. I could totally see that from Angela. Oh, yeah, easily. Easily. And, and that, that, that definitely makes sense in my mind that, but at the same time, she is such a small person and, and it sort of opens a can of worms in my mind of like, she is such a small person. How does she have the kind of strength to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, especially when Kelly was sort of, I don't I guess she, I, she might not have been trying as hard. I don't know. I, but I don't know. I guess it's, uh, I guess it comes down to your interpretation of, the, the characters. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's there's something in my head, and I keep forgetting what it is after I think of it. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sure it'll come back to me at some point. So, so I, I, I think I just remembered it. Um, what season where would you place this in the show like what season and i guess even so far as like what episode would you like what episodes would you place it between Ooh. you know i'm gonna be honest i have not watched the office in a hot sec um I have not had the time, um, and yeah, but that's a great question. Um, I would think, I think, I think since there's the, the, the absence of, you know, obviously Michael in the story, um, other than just the, the small comment, you know, other than saying that she would have to report this to Michael. Um, 
you know, it could it could happen anywhere as long as Aaron's there. Um, so I could see this happening before Jim and Pam got married. Uh, or not before, after. Um, maybe after she's had Cece, um, but before she had the other kid that I'm forgetting the name Philip. of. Philip, thank you. Yeah, so in between CP and Philip. CP and Philip? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I think that's about season six, because she's season four ends on Pam being pregnant. So that'd be about season five, season six. Um, uh-huh. it, it's it is kind of hard to place it in my mind because Michael is still there, but Andy's not. And Stanley and Phyllis aren't mentioned, really, but they could, but they're always there. Um, yeah, is Gabe there? Like, I mean, I, but Gabe is a little easier to forgive for not being there because, as he says in one in one of the Talking Heads, um, Florida says we need you in in Scranton, and Scranton says we need you in Florida. So Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm in Scranton, and Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm in Florida. Oh yeah reversed so one of the it could be one of those days um where he's not there it could be before to that day or it could be before saber comes in um if it wasn't for michael even being mentioned i would i would place it in season nine because it the characters seem the most outgoing at that point Um, yeah yeah they all know each other well enough Right, like Pam speaks out the most confidently she does in the entire series. Yeah, like, that is season nine. Pam, she's the most confident then, um, and Andy, and his, after a certain point, isn't there because he's out searching for fame. Mm-hmm. But but Michael's there. So other than the, at, at no, I, I mean, really, at no point. Is Michael and Aaron there, but Andy's not. There's there's no point in the show where that happens. So it is really yeah. tough place. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, I, I'll. Well, I guess we can. I, I want to break away from the story for a second. Which character do you not like the most? <laughs> uh. Um, the last time I rewatched it, it had to be Andy. Um, I, I just, uh, he irks me the wrong way sometimes. Wow. That is exactly the character that I hate. I'm okay with every other character. I hate Andy because he's so annoying. There are like, there, there are. I can, I could count on my hand, one hand, how many times I actually enjoyed Andy. The only one that actually comes to mind is the country roads scene with Dwight. That is one of my favorites of the entire show. It's so good, especially when Toby comes over. You have to stop. That's so good. Yeah, but. Other than that, I hate Andy. Yeah. I don't think I can... So, I'm not... Think of any good scenes with him. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm really not sad that he's not in the story at all. Yeah. Um, it's... Yeah, if it weren't for Michael being there, I would place it in the ninth season. Yeah. I, I guess... Hmm... I guess if we're, I guess if we if we made a little bit of headcanon about what kind of like if it what the with the full script would look like because this would not last the, a full episode's length. This would not be a full twenty two minutes or 
yeah. anything, anything close to that. Could see it maybe oh, be like twelve. I just got a good I question for that. Um, but I think if we were to flesh this out and do a full episode, I wonder if Andy could be. No, I was just about to say he could be out on the boat, but that happens after Michael leaves. Oh, um, he could be out sick or something. He could have some kind of uh, some kind of family thing he to do. Or... Could be, he could be on the honeymoon. That That's true. That is. Oh, I forgot. Wait, when do the honeymoons happen? Is that before Aaron? I'm pretty sure that. Yeah, that's before Aaron comes in. Ah, shit. Um. But it's never, but as far as I remember, it's never stated explicitly when the honeymoons were supposed to happen. It just, really? at at one point, um. It's not there. One of the characters says that Andy is out on one of his honeymoons. He doesn't say which one it is or out of which one it is because he bo- he books four of them. So who knows? How, it could be his first one. So that that would actually be a really good way. That would be a good one to. That'd be a good way to write him out of the episode. Yeah, it was the most annoying one. Yeah, although I so. One of the one of the office podcasts that I listened to that I just found recently is the Michael Scott Podcast Company, and it's these three guys. They are big fans of the Office. Um, the one guy knows the Office like I do, and he is he's fantastic at like quotes and trivia and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they were just talking about. The honeymoons, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh my god! How does that happen? I don't know how that feels. Whatever. Maybe it'll come back to me. But my question that I thought of earlier is, how? What? What storylines would you add to make this a full episode? Because the Wedgie Wednesday story is clearly that that is the A story. So what would you do for the B story, the C story, the D story, what have you? Hmm. I think I think this could easily take part like first, you know, three hours of the day before lunch. And instead of the episode ending, um, you know, um, I don't know, does it, does it specify if it ends at the end of the work day? Hmm. I mean, the way, the, the, the way the structure of the, of the episode usually goes is that the A story sort of goes throughout the entire episode, and then there are a couple, a handful of other storylines going on in between, like interspersed between sort of the break up the, the action of the A story. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. I think this could be, I think another story that could be going along with it is, Dwight and Jim arguing and Dwight spouting off like ridiculous facts. He could be like, yeah, statistically like this is why, you know, briefs are better than boxers or whatever. Um, just kind of like be Dwight and then Jim, you know, making his smarky comments. I feel like I could imagine that. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I would take it a different way. Because there, there's so many episodes... There are multiple episodes that have the A story, and then 
the other storylines are dealing with the repercussions of that or they're sort of reacting to that. But there are so many more that the A story is one thing, and then there are a bunch of different storylines that are completely unrelated to that. I don't remember the exact mm-hmm. episode or what the A story is, but the B storyline, or like even like the E storyline, is the accountants fighting over the temperature of the office. That's an early episode. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's the storyline. It has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on in the main story. But it's 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 sort yeah. of bringing relevance to the characters in that way. And it's, it's a very relatable thing in that office. And so I, it, it sort of fits. Um, the way I sort of the the story that Magni Pools gave us playing out over the day is he obviously says that that Jim and Pam come in like that's that's when they're starting the day and so Pam's wedgie happens at the beginning of the day like nine o'clock or something and then they I feel like they sort of discuss it immediately afterwards. Mm-hmm. For a little bit, and then our, when they take their lunch is when they sort of have that who should talk to her about this uh, yeah. discussion. And then when they're done lunch, Pam goes to Aaron and talks to her, and then closer to the end of the day because I feel like it would take a little bit of time for Aaron to write up the memo um, they that's when Pam approves the memo and even later than that maybe that would I feel like that would be close to the end of the day is when Angela gives Aaron the atomic wedgie um, yeah so uh, what would happen in between then? I guess it really would come down to when I would place the the episode because I, the the episodes definitely get more dense in the later seasons because they're trying to fit in so much more. Um, yeah, there's not as much room for scenes to breathe. Uh, yeah. Hmm. The, when is do you remember when Pam asks Jim like Pam talks she's a saleswoman at that point and it's it go it's in the opening credits in the later seasons. Pam says to Jim, Tell me everything's gonna be okay. And Jim says that, and then Pam says Tell me I'm great at sales, and Pim, and Jim kind of mumbles through it. Do you remember when that is? I don't. I, I feel like it's after the co-manager arc. So the Does co-manager it's... arc was season seven? Ultimate? Yes. Well, I mean, it, it's season six, and then it kind of ends in season seven when... Um, when Saber comes in, because Joe Bennett shuts the whole thing down. Um, okay. I'm going to look it up right now. It sales, Pam. Let's see here. Season 7, Episode 2, Counseling, yes. I feel like this would be a Season 7 episode. Yeah. Because Michael is still there, and... I don't know how Andy would be out. Maybe taking a really late honeymoon. Who knows? I don't care because I don't like him. <laughs> um, but Aaron is there, and she's she's definitely established enough by that point to to be the kind of character who would do that sort of thing and not fully realize, oh, I shouldn't do this in a workplace. Uh huh. Um. 
So, what was the question I asked earlier? Damn it, I keep forgetting my trains of thought. It was something about... Oh my god, I keep forgetting these things. Why? <laughs> Whatever. Um, so if this is in season seven, if we're going to place this episode in season seven, should we place it where when Holly is there? No, because Toby's Maybe mentioned. Potentially like in another storyline though. Hmm. That could actually be really interesting if Holly's mentioned, but she's not actually at the office. Maybe that's something. Maybe that's a way for Michael to be brought into the story is like he thinks it would be funny to do it to Holly. Yeah. Huh. And he can like really get into it with Aaron, like, you know, enthusiastic about it. And then they plan this out. And then he gets Holly. Yeah, but Holly's up in Nashua at that point. Okay. Although Pam does convince him to, in lecture circuit, to just, let's skip out on whoever it is, Buffalo or something, and let's go to Nashua, let's get closer. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, de I definitely don't think just from their from Michael and Aaron's dynamic, I don't think that they would uh, that Michael would really practice on Aaron because it's sort of a father daughter dynamic. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's, it's, I, I guess, I don't, I don't know how that would really, I don't know how that storyline would play out, really. That's interesting, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> my mind is blank right now, I'm trying not to keep too much dead air. Um. <laughs> Is there anything? Wow. What if is there anything that you would man? I have a half formed thought in my head and I can't get it out. It's terrible. This is part of the pain of uh, not writing down any questions, <laughs> just working yeah. on the fly. Yeah, you but gotta rely like, on your brain. Yeah, but I think it, I think it does work uh, to my benefit most of the time because it, it gives for some great conversation. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what one? You said you haven't watched The Office in a while. When do you think you're going to watch it again? Um, I'm hoping now that it's getting into the summer months, I can start uh, start watching it again. I, at one point, was watching it um, and listening to the Office Ladies podcast. Um, and so I was watching an episode where I was listening to the podcast episode and then watching the episode. Um, and I was just going through it like that. And I got through the first season, I think. And then I stopped because I, I didn't have any time. Um, so I'm not sure. Hopefully hopefully in a few weeks, though, I can get back into it. Hmm. I mean, I, I've never actually listened to an episode of Office Ladies and watched the same episode that they're dissecting at the same time. That's it, it was, it was I, I actually cool. I, 
there are there are tons of people who just put on the office in the background and that works for them but when i'm watching the office i actually like to sit down and watch it you know i like to pay attention to what's going on me too so look, i couldn't yeah. really have any sort of background noise going on at the same time because i'd either be paying attention to one or the other yeah I I can I can kind of go both ways. I can watch it either as total background, or uh, I'll get really invested in it. But I'm kind of with like that with with any TV show. Yeah. Um. So I'm wondering. I'm I'm looking at the story now. I'm wondering when it says the camera cuts to a shot of the closet door. Does that mean the storage closet that the Michael Scott Paper Company was in, or is that the closet that Ryan's office is in? When, oh, yeah, closet. I think maybe, um, Uh, I think maybe the the closet where um where Ryan is would make more sense. So I'm not sure because that would make sense because it is right there. But then because Angela looks both ways. And she thinks she's alone, even mm -hmm. though the cameras are always there. I, I'd imagine that shot would be the the camera looking through the blinds of the the kitchen door. But yeah. She neither of them would be there if it's not during the workday. So I don't know that. I don't know. It's it is hard to place because there were definitely like uh, Pam would be looking into the Pam would be able to look into the kitchen. Uh, Phyllis would be able to look into the kitchen. Erin would be able to look into the kitchen. Andy. Um, yeah. So Everyone. people would be able to see Angela walking out. So I'm Unless it's like at the end of the work day. That could um, be it. Angela, you know, tricked tricked Aaron into staying behind, you know, a few minutes, and then she thought she was alone, and then it's there. Then there's Jim and Pam, and yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, but it also says that Jim and Pam step into the hallway. So now I'm wondering if it's a closet out in the hallway outside like right outside of the office yeah i was thinking i guess i wasn't paying a lot of close attention to the wording um so when i was imagine i was imagining that shot like you know where angela and dwight go when they sneak off to have sex and it's like the rolly door oh yeah in the, the warehouse way. Yeah, that's kind of what I was envisioning, and like Angela, like opening that door, and then you know, like smoothing her, you know, hair down and stuff, and then looking, making sure no one was there, and then walking away, and then I can see Aaron coming out. That was kind of where I was thinking when I was reading it to begin with, until you said, until it said closet door. Right. Yeah, I definitely pay attention, like very close attention to the wording of things. Um, that would make sense because it says when they see Aaron and they step out of the hallway. So Aaron could be coming up from the warehouse and she's in the hallway and Jim and Pam come out into the hallway. Um, mm -hmm. Like Aaron's going to close up for the night. That yeah. would make sense. Yeah. 
I, I think the the hottest thing of the entire story is the end of Pam's talking head when she says, guess I'll have to wear cuter pairs on Wednesdays. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's just because The Office is my favorite TV show, but I would love to, f- I, I want to find someone like Pam in my life to spend my life with, and that, oh, just, just yeah. thinking about that kind of thing is like, yeah, oh, yes, please, I'd love to see a sequel <laughs> of this script. Yes, I yeah. definitely think that should happen. Yeah. But it comes down to to many polls to do it. Cause I, yeah. Um, it's not really good reception, though. I mean, looking right now, I mean, it's got 8,000 views. Yeah, um, that's, that's good enough. Yeah. Lots of comments, begging for more, lots of favorites. So, um, yeah, it's all up to him, really, though, if he wants to continue it or not. Yeah. Um, and it's, it was only released in uh, January 21st, January 16th of this year, so there is possibility for there to be a sequel, but um, I hope he does it. Um, yeah. It... <sighs> Who do you think El- who do you think also agreed to be to join in on this? I mean, obviously Pam, Aaron, and Angela, but who else do you think agreed to do it to do this? And who do you think opted out? Um, I think Phyllis definitely opted in um, based on on her reaction earlier in the story. Um, and considering how much she loves Aaron, um, I can see her doing it just to please her. And, you know, it gets a little chuckle. Um, um, Meredith, who, based on her comment also earlier, um, I, I don't think Stanley would go for it. Um, yeah. What about you? Yeah, I mean, Stillis, I think, definitely would do it just for, for the reasons you said. Like, they have that sort of bond where for for a moment they think that they might be mother and daughter and they just yeah. sort of have that connection and like they just sort of get along really well. Stanley absolutely would not. He's... He he wants to stay out. He he just wants to do his work, go home. So he would not yep. bother with it. Um, Jim, I I, could see... I don't I don't think Jim would, but no. he would he would definitely make he would he would definitely make fun of the people that did. And uh, I could see you know. There's there's not a lot, you know, on Jim and Pam at home, but I could definitely see, like, some alluring comment to, you know, them continuing this at home or something. Um, I don't think he would wedgie anyone else except for Pam. Oh, yeah. And he definitely wouldn't do it in the office. Exactly. That, that that actually I just I just heard of a uh, on Office Ladies actually I was listening to that today and I uh, I heard a little bit about uh, Angela Kinsey had the the shooting draft for one of the episodes and it had on it a uh, a scene where. Jim and Pam have sort of a racy conversation about how 
uh, Jim, Jim's talking about how they, they filmed them having sex the night before. And Pam is kind of mortified and, and, and it kind of goes along that way. So that, that would be very interesting to explore. But at the same time, yeah. I do like that they don't really explore the, the house life yeah. of Jim and Pam. And they sort of um, have a, a, a privacy to that. Yeah. A boundary. That's Michael's a tough call for me, because on one hand, I think he would, he he would. He'd be really hesitant to get into it, maybe because he had some kind of bullying around that when he yeah. was younger. But on the other hand, I feel like he would get way too into it, and he'd be super excited to get into something that involves people and and he, he, like the, the people he considers family for the longest time. And yeah. I don't know. I guess it would depend on who was writing the script. Um, yeah, I could I could see a uh, a moment with uh, Todd Packer, definitely. Oh, oh geez. Um, some something he did. Um, I can see that happening with Michael and him. Oh yeah. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see Todd Packer getting in, getting into that, and then taking it way too far. Yep. And I, I feel like that would work really well in season seven as well, because maybe it could be, because I honestly, season season seven is sort of the, the season of Michael growing up and. Uh, coming to terms with everything in his life. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, that would be a great, that would just be another great way to show Michael that Todd Packer really is not someone to idolize. He's not someone that is a good person at all, and he should stop talking. He should just distance himself from him. Yeah. I go with that. I think you were spot on with Meredith too. She, she definitely Meredith's down for anything. She's just there for a good time. She's 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 she never really gets too involved in the, the lives of people, but she's she's, she's always there. ready. Yeah, I think Kevin would just be laughing along the whole time, like. He would just think it's the funniest thing ever. He wouldn't even participate. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't be able to because he'd be laughing too much. Yeah. I can see that too. Dwight would have no interest in it whatsoever. Yeah, I keep call it childish, immature. Yeah. Although, um, I feel like he would try to make a pass at Angela from seeing Aaron pull up her skirt and, and give her a wedgie. I could see that, yeah. I, I don't know what form that would take or how he would do it, but he would definitely try to do something. Um, and Oscar? Uh, oh, he... Oscar. Completely forgot about Oscar. Um, and he would be the voice of reason in some way Um, I feel like he would he would be agreeing with Pam in the beginning I if he was there 
I think he would I think he would start to agree with Pam after other people uh started to get involved in Wedgie Wednesday. Um because at first he didn't say anything at all. He was he wasn't even mentioned in the episode in the in the episode in the script. Yeah. Um so I'm wondering I, I guess that could be written off as like it's just the one thing to Pam, and he he's he he doesn't want to get involved. It's he just wants to do his job. But I get yeah, it. It, it it would make sense for him to start speaking up about it and like, hey, isn't this kind of a little weird and ridiculous? After multiple people get involved, um, yeah. And I could see, like, Kevin totally making, like, an inappropriate joke and having his little, you know, chuckle while he points at Oscar laughing. Um. Yeah. Um, I mean, Toby wouldn't even do anything. He'd just be, uh, he would just kind of murmur out a, a like, Hey, you know, guys, we really shouldn't be doing this. And then everybody would shut him down. Yeah. So it's always kind of a non factor there. Um, yeah. Kelly and Ryan. Oh. I think oh, there's lots I... of potential with Kelly's, Kelly's role. Yeah, I feel, I feel like Kelly would be the person. I think Pam would be the per like kind of the, the main target, but I feel like yeah. Kelly would be someone who goes after people, but secretly, not so secretly, like in her nook, Ryan's the one kind of dominating her and, and, and giving her the wedgies. And she's super yeah. new because it's Ryan giving it to her. Yeah. I feel I like that would, totally be, that. That, that would be, I could, I can see that shot almost perfectly in my head too, of like just the camera walking into the annex and coming around the corner to Kelly's nook and it interrupts Ryan giving Kelly a wedgie and, and they and they break apart really quick and like Kelly's breathing hard or whatever. And, and she's super into yeah. it and then she's like, oh my God. And that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, it could be like they're they're in the kitchen area looking through the the door, and Ryan and Kelly don't realize it, and then when they do, it's like they break apart really fast, and then yeah, yeah, that's yeah, I could totally see that happening. Okay. That's a good one. Yeah, um, I think that's. Everyone, because Andy's away on whatever, and Gabe's in Florida. Yeah, there's Toby, but but he's just kind of there, and yeah, he's. I don't. I, yeah, yeah. He could. That could be like. The, <laughs> that could be the point where he's on the Sprint Strangler case. Yeah, but then, then. No, because then Holly's there. That doesn't work. No, I feel like Toby would just not really. Uh, like he's he mentioned, he, he doesn't always have to be seen, though. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we yeah. have everybody. Um, yeah. You got, any, you got any final thoughts on the story? Just. That is a great story. Definitely, definitely one that I will come back to and reread. Um, yeah, Magni did a great job on this. Absolutely, yeah. It, it was fantastic, and it felt so true to the characters. And I sincerely hope there is a part two <laughs> sometime down the future. Um. Yeah. Well, uh, that was that was. I think that was a great conversation. Um. I guess that, I guess that is that's this is 
another episode of the best book club um if you enjoyed this and you want to you want to hear more give it a like give it a comment tell me what you want to hear tell me what you thought give me feedback um and i, I will catch you on the next episode thanks for having me yeah thanks for coming on it was, it was a pleasure to have such a, another big fan of the office. <laughs>